In eResource 6.28, we go to Odyssey Tutorial 46 to compare sodium chloride solutions with different concentrations. For example, physiological saline, about 0.2 molar sodium chloride, seawater, about 0.5 molar, and of course saturated sodium chloride is about 6 molar. And this just gives you an idea of the relative crowding at different concentrations. In chapter 26 that deals with the chemistry of main group elements and their compounds, the central explanatory concept is charge density. In e-resources 26.1 and 26.2, we use the simulations of equated monatomic cations and anions of different radii, despite the radius of the potassium ion being almost twice that of the lithium ion, the lithium ion, the lithium ion moves much more slowly through water. Let's use the clipping feature for the equated lithium ion to see why. So here's the simulation there. If we just select the lithium ion, right click, set clipping center, zoom it up a bit. First thing that strikes you is that there are only four water molecules. And if we just um, change them to space filling, you can see why that the small size of the lithium ion means you can only fit four water molecules around. But what's really interesting here is that if I click on the solvation sphere and just expand its size like so, you see the water molecules all attracted to that lithium ion. So the effective hydration sphere around the lithium ion is much larger due to the greater charge density and the water molecules exchange much more slowly with surrounding water molecules. So the equated lithium ion in fact moves relatively slowly as if it was a very large ion. Laboratory Experiment 48 takes you through the steps for plotting the relationship between the binding energy and magnitude of the ionic charge for a variety of cations and anions. This is an example of where students can discover and plot relationships themselves. Odyssey simulations can also portray the hydrogen bonded cages around nonpolar solutes, as in this example from eResource 24.14 in Chapter 24. Let's have a look at it. Here's the simulation and uh, there's the stearate ion, the sodium ions there, and uh, the image of a hydrogen bonded network around a nonpolar molecular group lays the groundwork for the deep understanding of hydrophobicity, a central concept in biochemistry. Electrostatic potential map representations indicate the electron rich sites, coloured red, and electron deficient sites, coloured blue, on the electron density isosurface of a molecular model. These can be generated in Spartan molecular modelling software and displayed in Odyssey. They're used in e-resources throughout our textbook. The example here is from chapter 22 where we look at crown ethers and their ability to bind metal ions with some selectivity. In e-resource 22.12, two crown ethers are compared and the student is asked to predict which metal ion would bind most favorably to each molecule. Here you see a crown ether model with a transparent electrostatic potential map on the electron density surface, revealing the ball and stick model within. Although this is one of the least stable conformations, you can clearly see that the central cavity is more electron rich, indicated by the red orange color, relative to the outer rim, which is more electron deficient, indicated by the blue color. Positively charged cations can bind to the central cavity.
The next activity in the e-resource is to predict the selectivity of metal ion binding. We've got the two crown ethers here, and we've got three different metal ions of different radii. Uh, if we select, say, the lithium ion and hold the control button, right click and drag, and we can see that the lithium ion is too small for uh, that 18 crown 6 ether and can fit OK in the 12 crown 4. Uh, the, the sodium ion is really just a bit too small for the 18 crown and uh, too big for the 12 crown 4 and so on. And uh, then the next activity is to actually just test the three metal lines in competition and we just run the simulation. You can see that the sodium ion is not able to compete as effectively as the other metal ions for the two crown ethers. Electrostatic potential maps can also visualize the movement of electron density during bond making and bond breaking in the formation of an intermediate or a product molecule. The example shown here is taken from chapter 21 where we cover SN2 reaction mechanisms. Here the electron rich red cyanide ion forms a bond to a methyl group breaking the carbon iodine bond in the process. You can see the gradual drift of electron density through the molecule. Here's the actual simulation in Odyssey and uh, you can see the movement of electron density portrayed by the color change. So the intermediate is at the halfway point. Um, here's another representation of the same movement. The final demonstration of the power of Odyssey simulations is the accurate depiction of the random, disorderly nature of collisions between reactant species. Reaction mechanisms depicted like this can lead to the impression that reactions occur by all of the molecules acting in concert in successive events such as those indicated. In our project we've used the magnifying glass icon to remind the student that these events are only the productive ones, leading directly to product molecules, and ignore the far greater number of unproductive collision events. In eResource 1810, the simulation depicting the reaction between NO2 and F2 molecules shows unproductive and productive collisions and intermediates with transient lifetimes. Let's have a look. Odyssey Tutorial 53 simulates this two-step reaction where fluorine atoms are formed as intermediates in the first reversible rate-determining step. When we start the simulation, you will see collisions highlighted with halos, at which point you can pause the simulation, zoom in, backtrack, and see what happened. Let's try it. Okay. Oh, there's a collision. So let's go back and see what happened. So I'll just zoom in here. Into this area here. And step through the simulation. OK. Fluorine molecule collided with an NO2 molecule and one of the fluorine atoms bonded to the nitrogen atom.
but then the transferred fluorine atom bonded back to the other fluorine atom. So this was an example of the reverse reaction event depicted in the reversible first step. Let's keep playing the simulation for a while. After a while, you see the accumulation of intermediate fluorine atoms is constant, but the number of reactant molecules decreases and the number of product molecules increases. You also see both productive and unproductive collisions, the latter much more often. In this exemplar, you've seen how to build a simulation of an ionic solution get a feel for the crowding in a one molar iron concentration, and use the clipping feature to focus on iron equation. This and many other phenomena can be studied quantitatively and visualized graphically. The ability to see representations of intermolecular bonding, particularly hydrogen bonding, is a real feature. Electrostatic potential maps provide a useful visual indication of electron-rich and electron-deficient centers in a molecule and how that can change in bond making and forming. Finally, visualization of the progress of a reaction from productive and unproductive collisions can help students make sense of kinetics. Go to the textbook community website if you want to learn more about our project.